So we're coming to look at this unusual title again. Some of them are more uh, unusual than others. And uh, the title of our talk today, which we're inviting you to, is Why Explosion at a Picnic? I'm sure most of you like picnics, I like picnic, and uh, a chance to go out outside in the open air and have a, have a picnic, have some nice food and things like that. So, and of course you could always plan the perfect picnic, you know, and it would be so nice, wouldn't it, to plan it and have it all going well. Providing we get the weather, which we don't always get in Ireland, do we? No, but there was no caterers at this festival. They didn't turn up with any food, and it was a great big festival, a lot of people there, and they were very hungry, but no caterers arrived. And that was a terrible disaster, you know, for them. There was thousands of hungry people. And we have a story today where there's thousands of hungry people too. End of the day. Uh, they have a lot of hungry people there. There's maybe, uh, and you know, there's some time ago, there was a shortage of bread. There was no bread in Little. Somebody said that's the, uh, uh, like Armageddon, end of the world. <laughs> but uh, we got over it anyway. And, Eventually they got some bread, but there was not a bit of bread on the, on the shelves in Little and many other places as well. So people were buying crisps and all kinds of things. That wouldn't be very good, would it? So why explosion at a picnic? So we had the introduction, Matthew 14 verse 13, when Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. Well, he, Jesus, departed from there by foot to a deserted place by himself. Obviously, Jesus needed times to come aside together come aside and have a, his own personal quiet time, you know, with his heavenly father or whatever. And he went to this deserted place. That, that would be fine. But of course something else might be was going to happen. And so there was a multitude of people at that time. Uh, he, uh, of course, Jesus, what did Jesus hear? Well, last week we heard that <gasps> John the Baptist was beheaded. And maybe he felt he was very sad about it all, and he felt he'd uh, go off to think on his own. Maybe he thought he didn't want a premature crisis, and uh, he uh, went off by himself, this deserted place. But when the multitude heard it, they followed him on foot. Now you see Jesus, he got into a boat, as it says there, and he went across the Lake of Galilee, but the people could walk around, the race around on foot, and land. And they caught up with him. It wasn't going to be a very quiet time, was it? Why explosion at a picnic? Well, there we see the compassion of Jesus here in this particular uh, section, he had great compassion, the quest. And the prayer. And then satisfied. Were they all satisfied? Was everyone satisfied? I don't know what happened at the, the concert, you know, that they were running with no food. Um, but here it was. I wonder, would something happen? And they got food. Compassion. Well, you see, Jesus uh, went out to see here this place. He'd been obviously in some place, quiet place, or maybe a cave, or I don't know what it was. Uh, and uh, there would be in some houses. He might have been in a house there. 
We don't know what Jesus went out to say. Oh, the commotion of the multitude that come. You know. And of course, he had compassion on people like that. When they rushed all that way to, to see him. When they put themselves about, and they thought, here's a great one, you know, to come and see. And so there was the he healed the sick. There was great healing at that time. And so we had a busy day healing the rest of the time. Sick people. He was very much concerned for them. And he didn't like people sick. You know, sickness is because of the fall. Something that weak man has brought upon himself. But Jesus coming to show that he can rectify that. Isn't that amazing? He can change that. He can bring in a new world. And we can be there if we trust in him. But I'm sure he didn't miss an opportunity to teach. To teach the people at that time uh, as well. Because that's what he was, he, his job to do was to teach. The, the miracles were just to authenticate his person. That he was from God. The disciples were concerned that it was getting late. It's a, a desert place, deserted place. There's no shops, there's no way. Uh, uh, and the best to do is to tell them to go into the villages, look for the villages, and that could be a long bit away, and get some food, get some bread. So they, they, they were very concerned for these people because they could faint on the way, as it mentions in another uh, particular uh, story. Right. So, the request. We see the compassion of Jesus. He had great compassion. But here's a request. He says, you give them. You give them something to eat. What could they do with that? Well, there's, there's 500 men. Uh, sorry, 5,000 men, not 500 men, plus women and children. And we don't know whether each man had his wife there, and how many children they had. They'd be able to see children they'd be able to get there, and women who were able to get there. And so there could be quite a number of people. Uh, there might be 10,000, you know, you don't know, anywhere in that region of that. And so, here is the food. The food is placed in Jesus' hands. What? Five loaves and two fish. That's a symbol of it there. Uh, a, they're not real, of course, but it's just a symbol of the five loaves and the two fish that Jesus uh, placed in his hands and he lifted them up. You see, they always pointed the answers from heaven, you see, from God. And so he looked up to heaven, you know. And there was a prayer, wasn't there? The command. He commanded them all to get seated. So it was going to be orderly. There wasn't going to be people pushing and shoving. Get them to, when they sit down, then they'll have to wait until the disciples come in and give them, if there's anything there to give. Verse 19, you know. So he took the five loaves and the two fish while looking up to heaven. Well, that's, he's dependent on his heavenly father. He's trusting in God and praying to him. And he, he had a perfect human nature. And uh, he was completely filled with the Holy Church with God. And so he could do things like this. And he looked up to heaven. The answer was there, of course, he depended. He trusted in his Father in heaven. He trusted in God. And then he made a blessing. A blessing on the food, you know. Thank God for the food. There are others who did the same too. Um, one man in Bristol, a, I forgot his name, George Muller, huh? George Muller. And George Muller uh, 
he uh, got all the children who were around the table, he'd been praying all night, but he got all the children around the table and he thanked God for the food, but there was no food there. But he just had hardly finished praying when he heard the clip, clop, clip, clop. You know, God was working in the heart of the, the local baker. And the local baker came with a van load of bread to feed his children. So they didn't miss out on a breakfast. And so there is the what? The breaking and expanding. It was when he broke the bread, we were reminded on Thursday night, the breaking of the bread, you see, that he, uh, it, 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 what did you say, it expanded. It was more and more and more. And the more he break it, the more that came. You see. And that was quite something. Breaking and, and expanding. And of course, there are other times when he was uh, sitting with two uh, of his disciples, followers, not literal disciples maybe, uh, after they'd been on the Emmaus road. And uh, uh, he, um, he, he, he broke the bread. He, he assumed the place of the host. And he broke the bread and there he was revealed in the breaking of the bread. They recognized him. It spoke to them, you know. God revealed that this was Jesus, risen from the dead. So there's this great breaking and expanding. And then the giving of it out to the people. They all sat uh, patiently uh, and the disciples went round with this. It took some time to get round 5,000 plus the women and children. And uh, they got it all out to them and they sat very uh, well, I'm sure. There's no word of any pushing and shoving. But there it is. And, you know, the thing, other thing we see is they were satisfied. You see, God satisfies us with his word. He satisfies this people with the food. So they all ate and were filled. And the amazing thing is, another miracle, they took up 12 baskets full of fragments that remained. How in the world did that? That showed, you see, that Jesus can provide even more than we ask or think. Yeah. And so they had the best supper of all, didn't they? And there was none wasted. Jesus, uh, to, at another time, he told them to pick up the fragments, the stuff that's left over, that's not been wasted. He didn't encourage waste. Neither. So that was important too as well. And uh, there it was, they were filled, satisfied. And here, you know, he, Jesus satisfies our longing. Satisfies the longing of our hearts to know him and to love him. And to follow him. There was more left than they began. Sad. Hard to imagine that. But that's it, you see. That's what Jesus does. And so in this little story, he, he feeds this, and he, what what does it mean then, all this? What was the purpose of this mannequin? What did it reveal to people? What did they think? I mean, some people maybe thought, Oh, it wouldn't be wonderful to have this man to feed us. That would be great. There was another one, of course, in the desert, in the wilderness, Moses. Uh, and it was God gave them the bread from heaven. And he's the one who gives the true bread from heaven to feed our souls. It proved Jesus is the Son of God. He's the Saviour. He came down from heaven. He came to save us. And here he is, proving again another way. And it's really reminding of those great miracles in the Old Testament. They are, uh, uh, you know, they come up again. And uh, we learn something about them as well. Why is that? 
So he proved he is the one who fed the Israelites in the wilderness. They had to go through the wilderness uh, and because they were disobedient for 40 years. But even then he fed them. And they learned lessons, you know. And so that was, that was quite amazing, you know. Can Jesus feed you spiritually? That's the question, you see. And the wonderful thing is to be fed spiritually. To be fed from him. You know, uh, he's the bread of life. You know, and, and that's great. And uh, we can uh, hunger and thirst after him. And he will satisfy our need. And he will give us the word for ourselves. Well, in 1 Corinthians 10, 2 to 4, it tells us there that all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. As they went through the Red Sea, it was like a bat. They were encased in the water. They weren't wet, but that was like a baptism. They all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And they all ate the same spiritual food. It was reckoned, the manna was reckoned spiritual food. And they all drank the same spiritual drink. The water from the rock was provided. When Moses struck the rock, water came out. It says, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And what was that rock? And that rock was Christ. So it was Christ who was leading them. Uh, that's one symbolism of it. He was also uh, leading them in the pillar of fire, cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And when the uh, Egyptians were trying to attack them, uh, of course they were shielded by the pillar of fire and the cloud. And they, on, on their side it was dark, uh, sorry, on the Egyptian side it was dark, but on the Israelites. Bright light, they had light. And that was quite something, wasn't it? So there it is, that's our. And in Matthew 11, verse 11, Assuredly I say to you, uh, sorry, that, that, that shouldn't be there. That's, that's last week's. <laughs> All right. So why expulsion? Why is this great expansion? <coughs> Why is all this food? Well, it's great proof that Jesus is God. He's the Son of God. He came to save us from demons. So it's a short little story. We want to thank you for viewing. And uh, we pray that God will indeed bless you. And to know more and more about God's power and Jesus, the Son of God, you know, who came uh, to into this world to redeem us, to save us from our sins. So he wasn't too sorry for himself. He could have said, oh, well, I'm going off to commiserate and, and think about the death of John the Baptist and how sad no, he went out to help the people. He had compassion of them. And Jesus had compassion of you as you turn to him with all your heart and soul. So we pray the blessing and help. Lord, we do thank you, God, for your goodness to us. We pray, Lord, you're leading. We pray, Lord, you will guide us by your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your love and care and mercies to us. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.